Susie Orman went on an epic IUL rant on her Women and Money podcast. Let's take a listen to what she had to say and then I'll give you my thoughts afterwards. Quote, so the very first investment I want to talk to you about really is one that I've talked to you about before, which is indexed universal life insurance policies. I am begging you not to do them, not to do them, not to do them. And so many of you right now are getting approached by financial advisors, by life insurance salesmen, by other people telling you this is exactly what you do need. This is how you can make more out of your money. These are incredible retirement accounts. This is what you should do because the stock market may be too volatile. You can't get a good interest rate. Just do this and you'll make a lot of money. Now, I'm not going to get into, now, I'm not going to go into how Index Universal Life works. I just want you to know you need to stay away from it, close quote. Okay, a little short on details on this first part of her rant, painting everything with a very broad brush, no nuance, very black and white. This is, of course, the stock and trade of every financial guru with whom I'm acquainted and is precisely what I address in my upcoming book, The Guru Gap, how America's financial gurus are leading you astray and how to get back on track. They take a product like IUL that has a number of nuanced applications and they demonize it. And they weave their condemnations into their one-size-fits-all prescriptions that listeners from a variety of demographics can digest and ostensibly apply to their own personal financial situation. The problem is that's not really how financial planning works. There are certainly scenarios where a given individual shouldn't touch an IUL with a 10-foot pole. But there are other scenarios where it could mean the difference between running out of money prior to life expectancy or making your money last. More on that later. But as I've long said, nuance is not the purview of the one-size-fits-all financial planning guru. Next, Susie gives an example of one of her listeners who wrote in wanting to know if she should keep funding her IUL. Here's what she had to say, quote, and I feel so bad for this one woman who just wrote to me and she said, Susie, I need your help. For the past five years, I've been investing $200 a month into an index universal life insurance policy. And I wanna know if you think it's a good investment and if I should continue to do it or not. So she then sends me the statement from this policy and it shows that even though she has put in $12,000 over the past five years, that her accumulated value, the amount of money that she's accumulated in this is only $4,500. Yes, it's given her a $250,000 life insurance policy, but she paid a whole lot of money for a life insurance policy that she really doesn't need, close quote. First of all, how does Susie know that this woman doesn't need life insurance coverage? She could very well have a need for that $250,000 of coverage. But Susie is shooting from the hip here and doesn't have time for these types of details. Second of all, we're told that her accumulation value is $4,500. But we don't have any other details on the policy itself. We don't know this woman's health rating. We don't know her age. We don't know if she funded it properly. We don't know which company she used. We're simply expected to make a judgment on the viability of the IUL based on the fact that she's contributed $12,000 and has $4,500 to show for it after five years. Now, if you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you should know that something here is amiss. Something isn't adding up. Is this scenario representative of how the typical IUL policy works? Is it normal for a person to have contributed $12,000 and only have $4,500 to show for it after five years? Susie sure makes it sound that way. Well, smelling a fish, I decided to run an illustration of my own. I decided to recreate this woman's exact policy through one of the top IUL carriers in the industry. And here's what I found. If the policy had been structured properly, her accumulation value should have been much closer to $8,651 by the fifth year, with a surrender value much closer to $4,017. But we don't get that part of the story because it doesn't feed into Susie's anti-IUL narrative. Remember, it's much easier to dispense one-size-fits-all advice if you can use some really scary IUL disaster stories to buttress your anti-permanent life insurance claims. Next, Susie addresses the IUL surrender penalties. Quote, now, why do I say her accumulated value is $4,500? Because she really doesn't have $4,500 in this policy. Because this policy had a 15-year surrender clause on it, which says that if you take your money out before 15 years, you're gonna be charged a penalty. If she wanted to take out her $4,500 today, she would get zero money back. So now they have her. They have her wanting to give them $200 a month for the next 10 years. 10 years now, so that's $24,000 more for her to be able to get anything out of this. Do you understand what a huge mistake that is? Close quote. Okay, let's set aside the fact that had this policy been structured properly through a good carrier, her accumulation value would have been closer to 8651, not 4500, and her surrender value much closer to 4017, not zero. The broader point I wanna make here is about surrender charges. Starting an IUL is like getting married. It only really works if you plan on keeping it until death do you part. 
Never make the decision to begin an IUL if you think you're going to need the money in the first five or even 10 years, or if you're planning on canceling it before you die. The IUL is a long-term proposition. Moreover, the IUL should only be considered a complement to other tax-free alternatives like Roth IRAs and Roth 401ks that you should likewise be investing in. The IUL should be the last bucket you're turning to for liquidity in those early years. Furthermore, if the IUL only really works if you plan on keeping it for the next 30 to 60 years, depending on your age, do you really care what the surrender charges are in the first few years, particularly if we have plenty of other sources of liquid savings? The broader point I'd like to make in this video, however, is that there are a number of applications in which the IUL makes a whole lot of mathematical sense, particularly if it's used in concert with other more traditional tax-free alternatives. Here are three of those applications. First, IUL can serve as an extremely competitive bond alternative. If you can make between 5 and 7% net of fees over time without taking any more stock market risk than what you're accustomed to taking in your savings account, then that's a pretty safe and productive way to grow at least a portion of your retirement savings. Reach into your existing portfolio, remove the bonds, replace them with IUL, and you'll increase your return, you'll lower your risk, lower the standard deviation of your entire portfolio, and experience a better outcome over time. Second, it's a great way to mitigate the long-term care threat without all the heartburn that goes along with traditional long-term care insurance. Most IUL carriers these days allow you to receive your death benefit in advance of your death for the purpose of paying for long-term care. And should you die peacefully in your sleep 30 years from now, never having needed long-term care, someone's still getting a death benefit, probably your, your kids or your grandkids. So there isn't that sensation of having paid for something you hope you never have to use. And finally, the IUL can serve as a great volatility shield in retirement. Here's how it works. Save three to five years worth of living expenses in your IUL by day one of retirement. Then pay for your lifestyle expenses out of your IUL in the years following a down year in your stock market portfolio. That will allow your stock portfolio to recover before you take further distributions. By following this course, you can increase your sustainable withdrawal rate on your investments from 4% to as high as 8%. In fact, Ernst & Young recently did a study in which it vindicated this approach. They showed that by saving 30% of your retirement contributions towards a cash value life insurance policy like Index Universal Life, you can dramatically increase your sustainable levels of income in retirement. In short, if you can cut through all of the nasty, dismissive, anti-IUL rhetoric from financial gurus like Susie Orman and examine the IUL on its merits, it's revealed to be a dynamic financial tool with a number of practical applications that can help the average American mitigate risk and wring more efficiency out of their retirement portfolios. By the way, my national network of over 250 certified powers your advisors is comprised of CFPs, CPAs, and fiduciaries who understand both the benefits and the limitations of the IUL and who routinely recommend it as part of a balanced, comprehensive approach to tax-free retirement. Folks, my upcoming book, The Guru Gap, How America's Financial Gurus Are Leading You Astray and How to Get Back on Track is now available for pre-order on Amazon. Take the opportunity to order your copy today. Also, in the next 10 years, I'm looking to put a million Americans on the road to the 0% tax bracket. And if you would like some help implementing a balanced, comprehensive approach to tax-free retirement that shields you from the impact of higher taxes down the road, Head on over to DaveMcKnight.com and click on the Connect with an Advisor button. I'm happy to refer you to an advisor in the Powers Your Network that has been trained, vetted, and qualified personally by me. If you're a financial professional and want to learn how to become a certified Powers Your Advisor, head over to PowersYour.com and opt into my free video series. And if you have any comments or questions, feel free to drop them into the comment section below. I'll respond to every single one of them personally. And don't forget to click like, subscribe, and the bell so you never miss a video. This is David McKnight. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.